Coming up today on this week's episode, Mass Effect 3 breaks through the rumor gates, PS 3.5 a possibility with recently released patent, Forza Motorsport 4 has been revealed, my review of Polk Audio Surround Bar 6000, and much, much more. This is Nick's Gaming View. Access granted. Hello everybody and welcome to Nick's Gaming View episode number 34. You're here with your host, Nick McCandless. Now PS3.5 may become a reality due to a recently released patent. So Sony Computer Entertainment Japan filed a patent for an external processor for the PlayStation 3 in August, but was just published. The patent claims, quote, in accordance with an alternative embodiment, two processor elements may be cascaded by each employing its respective BIC in a coherent symmetric multiprocessor interface or BIF configuration. The coherent SMP interface, also known as BIF, of each processing element is coupled to one another to set up a coherent interface there between end quote. Now many of you guys may be just as lost as I am as far as the technological side of things, but focusing on the big picture, do you guys think of this as a way to prolong the console's life cycle? Or do you think it will fragment and confuse the market? If you think about it, it's almost becoming a PC in a way. Most console users are used to buying hardware and it lasts them a couple years not having to upgrade anything. And then the next generation starts. But once again, do you want to buy a PlayStation 4 this early? Do you want to buy an Xbox 720 this early? Probably not. But once again, do you want to restrict the game developers? No. So how could they get away from that? An external processor. It's actually kind of interesting because Rich Hilleman, EA's chief creative officer, admitted that he, quote, expects we'll see a PlayStation 3.5 before we see a PlayStation 4 and an Xbox 560 before we see an Xbox 720, end quote. So what do you guys think? Do you think this would be a great move for this generation of consoles? Or do you think it will actually fragment the market? Let me know what you guys see in the comment section. Now, Mass Effect 3 has broken through the rumor gates. So, Bioware's highly proclaimed franchise, Mass Effect, will invade the market once again during the holiday of 2011 and will remain a single player game. Electronic Arts has confirmed Mass Effect 3 will launch simultaneously on the PS3, 360, and PC. Now, while speaking on Mass Effect, EA announced the PS3 version of Mass Effect 2 will utilize the Mass Effect 3 engine, making the experience, quote, much more solid on the PS3, end quote, when it drops on January 18th, 2011. They also went on to confirm that the Mass Effect 2 demo will hit PS3 on December 21st. So I know that's a lot of information to comprehend right there. But it's really good news for all the PS3 owners out there that are wanting to get into the Mass Effect franchise. We're, that basically confirms that we're not going to be getting a crappy port of Mass Effect 2 to the PS3 consoles. We're actually going to get a better version, which it should be coming out a year after it did on the 360. So that gives the, the game its full value. It's using the Mass Effect 3 engine. So it's going to run better, it's going to look better. Great news for all the PS3 owners out there. Mass Effect 3, it was just a CG trailer, not too much revealed, but it's going to launch simultaneously on all consoles. So that's great for the gaming industry as a whole. As a whole, that's great news. So Mass Effect 3, definitely be sure to check that out. Now, Forza Motorsport 4 has been unveiled. So Forza Motorsport 4, being developed by Turn 10, was officially announced and will launch in the fall of 2011. Forza Motorsport 4 will support Kinect along with the standard racing controls on the standard Xbox 360 controller. Remember, these possibilities were shown during Microsoft's 2010 press conference during E3. Microsoft went on to claim, quote, Forza Motorsport 4 will be the most expansive, vividly realistic automotive experience across any console. End quote. So it's obvious who Turn 10 is going after right here. They're going after Polyphony Digital and their title Grand Turismo 5. Main competitors, even though they're exclusive to their own console, they still compete. And Grand Turismo 5 just released recently. A lot of people love the game. A lot of people are left disappointed. I personally love the game, but Crash Mechanics Online, definitely not where it should be. Turn 10, I'm sure they're going to execute. Their online is very solid. 
the crash mechanics are solid. It's not. It's more of an arcade racer than Gran Turismo 5, but it's more realistic in some aspects. But let's see what they do with Forza Motorsport 4. It'll definitely be interesting. Now, last week, if you watched my show, Nick's Game Review episode number 33, you would see that I told you guys that Uncharted 3 was unveiled. During the Spike VGAs, they actually showed the trailer, which revealed the release date. So, Sony and Naughty Dog revealed the jaw-dropping Uncharted 3 trailer during Spike's 2010 VGA Awards show, announcing the release date of November 1st, 2011. Along with the release date, one of Uncharted 3's lead animators announced, quote, Nathan will always be together with someone. Sometimes with Sully, and sometimes with other people. Things will be discussed later. It is also the kind of game where the main character is always accompanied by someone of the same sex or opposite sex sometimes, which makes things a little more interesting. End quote. So is this a good thing or a bad thing? Would you guys rather play the whole entire story with an AI character, or would you rather have some segments where you're by yourself like the previous Uncharted titles? Let me know what you guys think. It could be a good thing or a bad thing, it depends on the player. Now, EA Sports announced SSX Deadly Descents. SSX, the hit snowboarding title that debuted on the PlayStation 2, will be making a comeback. Peter Moore, EA Sports president, said, quote, An entire genre was born from the original SSX a decade ago. It is time to reboot one of the most popular franchises of all time in an unpredictable and unexpected way. Fans have been begging this since the launch of this generation of consoles, and we have an experience that will be well worth the wait. This franchise has always been about racing, tricks, characters, and fun. SSX Deadly Descents will deliver all of that and more on a global scale with rich online experiences and with the sense of adventure never before imagined on a snowboard. End quote. So, SSX was the first game I ever played on the PlayStation 2. When I got PlayStation 2 for Christmas, my parents got me SSX. Loved it. After that, the titles after that got kind of, uh, but I'm definitely looking forward to see what they can do with next generation consoles. I mean, a lot of people might not be looking forward to it, a lot of people may not have tried it out, but SSX was the game, the snowboarding game. It was fun. This honestly, besides Uncharted 3 and Resistance 3, is my most hyped title that was announced during the Spike VGAs. I feel it's going to be a sleeper hit. A lot of people are like, oh, SSX, that's no big deal. I'm a huge fan. I'm definitely looking forward to it. I'll definitely be picking that one up. Now, taking a quick break from the console gaming market, World of Warcraft Cataclysm, the latest expansion for World of Warcraft, shatters PC sales records. So Activision announced World of Warcraft Cataclysm sold a massive 3.3 million copies in under 24 hours after release. Now, some of you guys may be like, well, Call of Duty, Halo, they all do that. But what I, I the reason why I find this extremely impressive is due to the large role of piracy in, P, in the PC gaming market. A lot of PC games fail because of piracy. We all know that. Console gaming, yes, the 360's been hacked, but it's not as easy to hack a 360 as, a, as it is a PC. And hacking a PS3, you have to go through a lot of stuff. PC, it's very simple. But for it to still sell 3.3 million in 24 hours, legit copies, that's huge. So anyone who says, oh, the PC gaming market's dead, looks like you need to go back to the books. Now, Prototype 2 was announced by THQ once again during the 2010 Spike VGA Awards. So the trailer revealed the player will take control of a new character who's going after Alex Mercer from the first Prototype. The trailer revealed it would launch sometime in 2012. So, it looks like THQ learned the lesson here. Don't get me wrong, Prototype was very solid. I loved the game. But I, along with many other people, felt Infamous was a much more solid title. Now, with Infamous 2 coming out later next year, THQ's like, okay, we'll take that extra year to make Prototype 2 what it should be. Prototype has a lot of potential. I mean, the story, just based off that teaser trailer has me very excited to see what happens because you're not controlling Alex you're controlling someone that goes after Alex so it's nice to know that THQ isn't in a rush to get this out I hate when companies rush games out so yes some of you guys were surprised and I was surprised 2012 why are they announcing it now let's get the hype train going they know Infamous 2 is coming out next year they don't want that to be the only talk of the town 
Now, Killzone 3 split screen co op has been confirmed. So, Herman Holst, the managing director and co founder of Gorilla Games, spoke out and said, quote, We found a lot of power after we completed Killzone 2. Just to give you an example on the graphics side, we pulled a level from Killzone 2 into the Killzone 3 engine and ran it at 50%. That's how much power we're able to find. You can see it in split screen co op. We had to do the double rendering anyway. End quote. So there you have it guys, Killzone 3 will have split screen co-op. All of us felt Killzone 2 should have had it, at least we're getting it with Killzone 3. I loved Killzone 2, I know I'm going to love Killzone 3, I was in the beta, very solid, very solid title. So I'll definitely be picking that up day one without a doubt. Now Todd Howard, the game director and executive producer for Bethesda Game Studios, revealed the Elder Scrolls 5 Skyrim. So that's fantastic news for all the RPG fans out there. Oblivion, a lot of people fell in love with that game became addicted to it. Don't be surprised if this does the exact same. So that's it for the news this week. As you can see, there was a lot of news due to the 2010 Spike VGAs. I felt Spike did a very good job locking up the deals they did. I think it was the best show they've had. So, you gotta applaud them for that. Now before we head out, I'm gonna head to my review of Polk Audio Surround Bar 6000. I'll be right back. Gamers all across the globe spend hundreds upon hundreds of dollars to maintain their hobby of gaming, buying the latest and greatest television, the latest gaming consoles, and the latest games will without a doubt leave your pockets bruised. Although gaming is already as expensive as it is, most gamers seem to forget about one other type of technology that will greatly enhance their experience. Sound. Gamers tend to look at sound systems as something that is not needed and only provides a large benefit for hardcore film followers. They tend to focus on the latest and greatest televisions and games leaving audio behind. Now do not get me wrong, a nice television is essential to your gaming experience as it provides the video aspect of gaming, but that's only half of it. Using the speakers that come built in with your television is only going to provide you with the worst sound quality possible. With no true subwoofer and the lack of high wattage, the sound coming out of your television is not going to sound anything like it was intended to. Now, I know many of you guys are thinking, what if I want a surround sound experience, but do not want to run speakers and wires throughout the listening area? That is why I'm here with you today to introduce you guys to Polk Audio Surround Bar 6000. After 14 months of tedious development, the masterminds behind Polk Audio had developed a way to bring gamers a surround sound experience without the need for sloppy wires and space consuming speakers. Polk Audio Surround Bar 6000 is more than just any average sound system or sound bar out there. With a 2 inch thin self powered speaker bar and a wireless 7 inch subwoofer up to 75 feet, you are sure to get an amazing sound experience without rear speakers or speaker wire. As many of you guys know, most 5.1 slash 7.1 surround sound systems require that you purchase a receiver to power your home theater speakers. The receiver's purpose is to process the audio from the selected input and provide power to the speakers in order to produce the sound. With this sound bar, there is no need to go out and buy a receiver because it's conveniently self-powered. A simple optical or 1 8 analog connection quickly connects the surround bar to essentially any AV receiver while the included 7 inch subwoofer powers clean authentic bass wirelessly from anywhere in the room up to 75 feet away. After you have completed these steps, just press the power button and you're ready to rock. Polk Audio Surround Bar 6000 features two 80 watt speakers that utilize Polk's patented SDA Stereo Dimensional Array technology. This technology allows the surround bar to simulate a 7.1 audio experience without the need of an AV receiver and messy speaker wire. The wireless 7 inch subwoofer included with this product pumps out a commendable 120 watts which features a stronger motor structure than previous sound bars from Polk Audio. This allows the subwoofer to become more efficient and require less power to push out pounding bass. When I first heard the sound this product could output, I could not believe what I was hearing from something that takes a couple minutes to hook up and virtually no space. Now although this sound bar is great for gaming, it is also amazing for watching movies. Being a huge fan of Blu-ray, watching movies has become my second hobby over the past couple years. I'm still amazed by the video quality I'm receiving from my new television and the latest movie releases, but I never realized what I was missing until I hooked this baby up. While watching the epic science fiction film Avatar, I found it easy to become engaged in the amazing experience directed by the prestigious James Cameron. 
As with anything else, the product does have one drawback. While it is nice that Polk Audio Surround Bar 6000 features a rear panel with three inputs, one optical and two one-eighth analog inputs, the decision to only integrate one optical connection is one that lacks deliberation. Now, while many users may just run a digital optical cable from their television's digital audio output into the surround bar utilizing the one input, many televisions on the market today do not output a Dolby Digital signal and deliver a subpar PCM signal. With Blu-ray players, set-top boxes, game consoles, and more taking over on the home theater front, I feel Polk Audio missed out on a huge opportunity to shine with their latest soundbar product. Now, while this issue may not have an impact on every user, for those in my scenario, it prevents the consumer from utilizing this hardware to its fullest on all components. Overall, Polk Audio's Surround Bar 6000 is a force to be reckoned with. With exceptional sound quality without the need of rear speakers and speaker wire, Polk Audio Surround Bar 6000 is a must-buy for any gamer slash movie watcher who wants great sound without running speaker wire and placing multiple speakers throughout your room. Alright guys, and I'm back. I want to thank you all for watching the show, Nick's Game Review, episode number 34. If you're a new watcher, feel free to email me, or even if you're a continuing watcher, you can reach me at admin at thegameraccess.com. You can follow me on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash thegameraccess. Be sure to check out the site, thegameraccess.com. So I want to thank you all for your support. I want to go ahead and give you guys a heads up, though. There's going to be a two-week hiatus for the show due to the holidays being Christmas and New Year's. It's gonna, There's a lot of stuff going on, so there won't be a next game review next week or the week after that due to the holidays. But January 8th is when next game review episode number 35 will return. Should have something for you guys there, but just want to go ahead and give you guys a heads up. So if there's not a show the next week or two, don't be surprised. Just because of the holidays, things get really crazy. I have family coming over, so I'm going to take a two-week break from the show. But after that, I'm going to be coming back strong. So once again, thanks for the support. I'm out.